In the last lecture, we learned what is a connectivate route card and what do we use it for. Basically, we use connectivate route card to decide if a route can be activated or not. We use this route card when we want to check on some condition before showing the component view to the user. And we understood connectivate route card with a use case. And the use case is we can use a connectivate route card when we want to protect a route from an unauthorized user. And in the last lecture, we also learned how we used to implement connectivate route guard in Angular 14 and lower versions. But from Angular 15, the way we implement connectivate route guard has changed a little bit. In the last lecture, in order to implement connectivate route guard, what we did is we created a service class. That service class is inheriting from can activate interface. And when it is implementing from can activate interface, it has to provide an implementation for this can activate method. And this can activate method, it should return a Boolean value true or false based on whether we want user to access a route or not. Now here I am on the official website of Angular. You can type angular.io in your address bar and you will be redirected to this page. There, let's go to the stock section and there I will open this references. And in there, I want to see API references. And here I'm going to search for can activate. Okay, so you can see that here we have the can activate and it is striked out. That means it is deprecated in Angular 15 and higher versions. And instead of can activate, now we have can activate function. So just like React, now Angular is trying to move towards the functional approach. And that's why it has deprecated this can activate route card. And now it is providing this can activate function. So let's see how we can use this can activate function to implement a can activate route card. Here I'm back in VS code. Let's go to the routing module.ts. And there we want to protect this checkout route for that. This route object, it provides us a property called can activate. To that, we need to assign an array. And in that array, currently we are specifying this auth guard service, which is implementing the can activate interface. So this was the approach we used to use in Angular 14 and lower versions. But now we are not going to use this approach. So I will remove it from here. I will still keep this import statement here. So we will use it in our coming lectures. But now I'm not going to specify this auth guard service to this can activate property. Instead, now what we can do is from Angular 15, inside this array, we can specify a function. Here I'm going to use arrow function syntax. You can also create a function and then assign it here. But I just want to show you all the ways in which we can create a can activate route guard in Angular 15 and higher versions. So here we can specify a function like this. And this function should return a Boolean value true or false. So for example, here I can simply say return true. If I save the changes and if we go to the web page and let's go to our Angular application there, if I go to the courses page and if I click on this buy now button, it should redirect us to the checkout page. As you can see now, if I go back and from here, if I return false and now if I save the changes, this will not allow us to access this checkout page. So let's go back to our application. Let me go to this courses page there. If I click on the buy now button of any one of these courses, you will see that we are not being redirected to checkout page. So in Angular 15 and higher version, implementing a can activate route card is as simple as this. Now here we don't want to return a hard coded value true or false. Instead, we want to check some condition and based on that condition, we will return a Boolean value true or false. And in that case, the function is going to have more than one line of code, right? So instead of directly creating a function here and assigning to this can activate property, what we will do is we will create a file for that. Let me collapse this service folder, this login folder, this header folder as well, and maybe this courses folder. Okay, and in this app folder, let's create a new file and let's call this file maybe auth 
guard.ts okay you can name this file anything and inside this file we are going to create a function so i'm going to create a variable i will simply call it can activate but you can name this function anything it's not mandatory that you name it can activate you can name it anything and to this we are going to assign a function just like this and i want to use this function in our routing module file so what i will do is i will also export this function from this file and inside this function we want to write some logic based on which we will allow user to access a route or we will restrict user from accessing a route and the logic is going to be same which we have written for this can activate method so i'm going to copy this if else statement from here and i will paste it inside this can activate method again you can name this method anything it's not mandatory that you name it can activate but just to keep things simple i'm naming it as can activate now when we have written this if else statement there we need two things we need auth service and we need this router instance for that inside this function itself i'm going to create a variable again i'll use const keyword for that i'll call it auth service okay and here i want angular to inject an instance of auth service class now in order to use this inject method we also need to import it from angular slash core so let's first do that okay and to this inject method we will specify the type so here we want angular to inject an instance of auth service class and again in order to use it we need to import it and now this auth service this is not a property it is a variable so we don't need to use this keyword here in order to access that variable then we also need an instance of router class so i'm going to do the same thing i'll create a variable i'll call it router again i'm going to use the inject method to tell angular that it has to inject an instance of this router class and again in order to use this router class we need to import it from angular slash router all right and here instead of saying this dot router we can simply access it like a variable because this router now it is a variable and that's it so now what i want is i want to assign this function here instead of this arrow function so i'll remove it from here now in order to use this function this can activate function inside this routing module first we need to import it so let's go ahead and let's write an import statement what do we want to import we want to import this can activate function and from where we want to import let's specify the path here so from the current directory we have this auth card file so from this file we want to import this can activate and let me go ahead and let me specify this can activate function for this can activate property inside this array and with this now our application should still be working as it was working earlier so let's save the changes let's go back to the application okay and currently since the page has reloaded no user is logged in so if i click on this buy now button it will redirect us to the login page now let's go ahead and let's log in here so for that i have already specified the username and password it is basically saved i will click on this login button you will see this message welcome john smith you are logged in so now this user john smith is logged in to this application so this user now should be able to access the checkout page so when i click on this buy now button for any one of these courses the user will be redirected to checkout page but if i go ahead and if i log out from here so you see it says you are now logged out and we have been redirected to login page now if i go to the courses page and if i try to access the checkout page by clicking on this buy now button it will again redirect us to login page it will not allow us to view the checkout page so as you can see how simple it is to implement can activate route card in angular 15 and higher versions all we have to do is we have to create a function and we need to assign that function to this can activate property but prior to angular 15 in angular 14 and older versions what we used to do we need to create a service 
that service should implement from connectivate interface then that service class has to provide an implementation for this connectivate method and this connectivate method should have the logic to return a boolean value based on when do we want to allow user to access a route but this approach has been simplified in angular 15 and higher versions all we have to do is we have to create a function there we need to write the logic and we need to assign that function to this connectivate property of that route which we want to protect here we want to protect this checkout route so for this route we have specified this connectivate property and to that we have assigned that function this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions related to connectivate route guard, then feel free to ask it.